Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went to Lose Gaming. Do you have a suddenly piqued interest in the tirelessly working active grandmaster of the Knights of Favonius, Jean Gunhilder, in the near future? Rumor is that the Dandelion Tights of Favonius is soon to become the Sea Breeze Dandelion Thighs of Favonius. But before we get started with the guide in this video, I wanted to point something out about my YouTube channel. 60,000 subscribers! Can you believe that? I feel like I'm an actual YouTuber now. And since you guys did such a good job with my first sponsorship, can you believe I managed to get another one? It's time to pay some bills, and I'm not sure if you remember them, but it's Raid Shadow Legends! Raid Shadow Legends has millions of players and dozens of tough bosses, but its heart and soul are its jaw-droppingly gorgeous champions. And guess what? They've just introduced an entirely new playable faction, the Shadowkin. The Shadowkin are shrouded in mystery, hailing from the furthest reaches of the eastern continent, beyond the Brimstone Path. It's believed they've been under the brutal heel of the demon spawn for hundreds of years, but in the last few months after overthrowing Siroth's yoke and revealing themselves, are they honorable? Yes. Evil? Not anymore. Are they good? Only time will tell. Come meet the new arrivals in Raid Shadow Legends. Check out these incredible 3D models of these legendary Shadowkin champions. Jintoro, Yoshi, Genzin, and my favorite, Riho. And did you know, the fastest way to level up your champions is through farming the campaign. You can grind loads of EXP and silver all at the same time. With tons of quality of life features in Raid, you'll be able to farm tons of resources super efficiently. And this month, Raid's releasing an insane amount of content. They're releasing 11 new champions, 200 brand new missions, with an exclusive legendary champion if you can finish all those missions. And if that's not enough, they're adding five tough new levels to almost every single dungeon in the game. That's an insane amount of content. So what are you waiting for? Use my links below so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. Good luck, and I'll see you there. Seriously guys, I wanted to thank all of you for your support, as well as Raid Shadow Legends for their generosity in sponsoring this video. Jean has been around since day one of Genshin Impact's release, yeeting things into the stratosphere. What is her yeet, you might ask? According to Urban Dictionary, yeet is to discard an item at a high velocity. Jean is the perfect embodiment of this. By using her elemental skill, Gale Blade, you can launch many small and mid-sized enemies at a 10 to 80 degree trajectory away from you. This is one of the single most satisfying things to do in the entire game. There's something therapeutic about watching the local fauna of Teyvat flail helplessly around as they contemplate their own mortality before being impaled and catapulted to the moon. And then finally, feeling the sweet release of death as the ever so benevolent laws of gravity kick in to end their miserably short existences in the mortal realm. Besides having the hurling power that any Olympic shot put athlete would be envious of, Jean is also a healer, a cleanser, and a decent nuker. No, oh, right, this is supposed to be a guide video. First, I need to clarify that this video will not be about Jean's physical damage output. It will be focused on her Anemo Damage sub DPS build. So let's go through the Dandelion Knight's skills. Jean's elemental skill has a very high damage multiplier. You can hold it to group up more enemies for up to 5 seconds. There are some pretty interesting ways to use it. For example, you can use it as a budget venti tornado to hold things in place. Utilizing Jean's force choke, this allows for Ganyu's burst and for many other things to do insane AoE damage to all the things unfortunate enough to be caught in it. Also, if you have any friends to play this game with, unlike me, your friends can beat the living snot out of enemies while you hold them in place with Jean Z. After Jean's charge attacks, some enemies can be dragged back down to the ground with her E before being launched into the air again for two instances of fall damage. Of course, you can use it to launch things into the water or off cliffs, and you can even use it to poke a robot's eye on occasion. Next, let's talk about Jean's Burst, which does big anemo damage, heals the entire team, and generally pushes things away from Jean. Keep in mind that it rotates the camera to the front of Jean, which can be a bit disorienting. Now, when things enter or leave her burst's radius, they take some additional anemo damage. Her burst also gradually cleanses elemental debuffs off of the active character, which is nice. 
So let me ask you this. Have you ever wanted to force choke your enemies and drag them through a visible wall of wind that literally could cut things in half multiple times before launching them 100 feet into the air? Well, you're in luck because of the in and out tech. By combining Jean's force choke with her burst and the fact that when things enter or leave her burst radius, you can drag enemies in and out of her burst radius while strangling your opponents in midair. This is perfect for those particularly sadistic individuals who enjoy unique ways to inflict terrible, terrible damage. Anyway, her passives are good, with her first passive healing a bit with her basic attacks. This is good for some pinch emergency healing for your whole party. I also forgot to mention from earlier, all of Jean's healing scales off of her attack stat. So the more attack that she has, the higher her healing is. Her second passive is highly recommended to unlock as soon as possible, because it refunds 20% of her burst's energy, thus reducing her burst energy cost from a very steep 80 energy to a very reasonable 64 energy. Showcase and skills aside, let's dive into her artifact choices. As always, my numbers are damage maximized numbers, a wrote an algorithm that shuffles around artifact main stats and subsets to find the best combination of stats for a specific character and weapon combination. These calculations are based on a level 90 constellation 0 gene with her talents at 999. With a lot of artifact farming, you can reach around 60 to 90% of these numbers. As a reminder, this video is focused on her anemo damage. For artifacts, the two piece Viridescent Veneer and two piece Gladiators is the best combination for her skill damage. For her burst damage, two piece Viridescent Veneer and two piece Noblesse is the best option. Now when running Jean as a 4 piece Viridescent Veneer support, it's good to know that she has a relatively small loss of damage and can provide your other characters with 40% resistance shred. Alternatively, you can run her as a Noblesse Oblige support when needed. For maximum Anemo damage, you'll want an attack percent timepiece, Anemo damage goblet, crit rate or crit damage circlet, and for substats, you want the usual as much crit rate and crit damage as possible, some attack percent, and maybe some energy recharge if it happens to be there. Next, let's analyze her weapon choices. When it comes to weapons, the clear winner currently is the Primordial Jade Cutter, which is also the baseline for this chart. It has 44.1% crit rate at level 90, which makes building Jean much easier. On top of this, it just adds a ton of attack thanks to his passive, and Jean actually has pretty high base HP. Not only that, but I think the Primordial Jade Cutter matches Jean's aesthetics pretty well. If you are a Jean aficionado, the Primordial Jade Cutter is the only weapon on this list that I would ever recommend pulling specifically for Jean. As for the other weapons, the Summit Shaper is a decent stat stick, but even with a shield and 5 stacks, its average damage output is much lower than the Jade Cutter. But nonetheless, it's still a really good choice for Jean. The Aquila Favonia is decent thanks to its high base attack and bonus attack percent, but for Anemo damage, it does fall short but it's worth noting that it does boost Jean's physical sword attacks as well, so it's still a great weapon for her. Now perhaps the most free to play accessible weapon for those of you that have been playing for a while is the Festering Desire. I like the Festering Desire for Jean because it's good for her yeet damage and has the added bonus of having energy recharge as a substat, therefore allowing her to burst much more often. The Festering Desire's yeet damage is the highest out of all the swords that provide energy regen. However, Jean's burst does a lot less damage with the Festering Desire, but again, Again, she's able to do it more frequently. As for other notable weapons, the Harbinger of Dawn is a solid choice for free to play players, but it does have the problem of if your HP falls under 90% you lose a ton of crit rate. Regardless, this is still a great choice for free to play players if you don't have any better options since it's pretty easy for anyone to bring it to refinement 5. As for other swords, the Black Sword and the Black Cliff Sword are both decent. And finally, the Favonius and Sacrificial Swords are good as well for additional energy regeneration or for a more support focused Jean. Next, I want to talk about Jean's constellations. Jean Constellation 1 is one of my personal favorite constellations in the entire game. It adds 50% bonus damage to her Gale Blade if you hold it for one second or longer. And this actually encourages you to hold her E. Holding her E is just cathartic to me for some reason. You just get to watch some stuff for a bit and then annihilate your enemies as you blow them away. And to be rewarded with bigger numbers for doing this makes it even better. Constellation 2 is great as well.
a great quality of life improvement with more movement speed, which is great for exploration as well as even for dungeons as well. Constellation 3 adds 3 levels to her burst and thus increases her burst damage by around 18%. Now Constellation 4 is arguably her best one, which shreds enemies and emo resistances by 40%. This increases both her skill and burst damage by around 30% and provides insane support for other Anemo characters. It's also one of the few sources of a Nemo resistance shred in the game. Her Constellation 5 adds 29% damage to her skill, so by Constellation 5 her skill damage is doing a whopping 88% more damage compared to a Constellation 0 gene. Last and actually the least is her Constellation 6, which is largely cosmetic and adds these cool Anemo swirly things around her for some time. Now as you can see, Jean's constellations are quite valuable. Unlike a character like Chi Chi, every Chi Chi constellation feels like a kick in the teeth, and I especially understand this pain thanks to my Constellation 15 Chi Chi. So if you ever pull a Jean dupe, and as long as it's not your 6th dupe or higher, just know that every single constellation makes her feel even better to use. But do you need constellations to use Jean effectively? Of course not. In fact, Jean is one of the few characters that can run exceptionally bad artifacts and still do a ton of damage to specific troublesome enemies. Thanks to fall damage scaling with the enemy's max HP, she can do upwards of 60,000 damage through fall damage alone against many of the humanoid enemies in the Spiral Abyss. If you factor in fall damage into the previous calculations, then the discrepancy between a C0 gene and a C5 gene becomes much smaller. So if you're struggling against Fatui agents or Sassin mages, and you also need a healer, and also she's great for breaking a lot of elemental shields, then Jean might be worth the investment. But do keep in mind that you need to be within 20 levels of the enemy if you want to properly yeet them in order to do fall damage to them. And also keep in mind that there's actually a lot of large enemies that can't be launched by Jean, and therefore the fall damage can't apply to them. I also wanted to discuss whether you should build her or not. If you're a cultured gamer like myself and you have Jean, then what the heck are you waiting for? Now, if you're not a cultured gamer, you need to ask yourself if you have a spot for her in your team, and if you need her kit. At low investments, Jean is still an incredibly fall damage bot and pinch healer. She is amazing at breaking elemental shields in the right situations, and she can function well both at low investments and at high investments. And I also wanted to give the Jean Mains Discord a shout out as well. If you're planning to build your Jean and have any questions, be sure to go check out their Discord. I only cover it on a small fraction of what Jean is capable of. The link will be in the description below, and you can occasionally catch me there as well as I sometimes chat with the people there. They are a very friendly community that's very passionate about dandelion tights, and are always willing to help. Overall, Jean is one of the most fun and satisfying characters to play. She's definitely a contender for best waifu and is one of my personal favorite characters. From a gameplay perspective, Jean is the jack of all trades type, being a good sub DPS support character, healer, and also the best abuser of fall damage. If you do primarily want her for her big anemo damage, Jean is quite dependent on her constellations, artifacts, and weapon but she is still an amazing character even at Constellation Zero for all the utilities previously mentioned. And soon, Jean will have even more reason than just her kit to use in the upcoming patch or so. If you're still not aware of what I'm talking about, I'm sure someone in the comments section will inform you. Thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.